And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, today we're taking a look at Burke's Gambit. Now, Burke's Gambit had several things going against it when I first heard about it. One was the name. I'm Burke's Gambit, what does that even mean? And in fact, uh, apparently it's just the ship that you are riding on. You're on a salvage ship called Burke's Gambit. Okay, the graphic design of the game wasn't that impressive either. And then I found out it was a social deduction game, and I thought, huh, there are a lot of social deduction games out there. However, this is part of the new line of games from WizKids, and I was very curious to see how these, this game went, so I thought, let's give it a try. Let's see if it's any good. On this, in this game, you are on a ship where some parasite has gotten on. Think the movie The Thing. And someone's been infected with the parasite, except that person doesn't know they've been infected with the parasite. Meanwhile, other people who are on this ship are working for the evil corporation. They want to get this parasite back to Earth so that they can develop it and make biological weapons. What's going to happen? Here's how it plays. At the beginning of the game, each player is going to get one of three cards. All right, so first, you're going to take these cards. These are different roles on the ship. You're going to always use the captain, and then you're going to shuffle in enough other cards to match the number of players, shuffle them together. Everyone gets a role card, which you will reveal. Everyone will know what your role is. You're also going to get an affiliation. You can either be part of the Deep Space Salvage Crew, Blue, or the Acquisition Support Specialist, which the rules take great delight in just giving its initials for the rest of the game, but we call them red. So the blue and red players, and the number of these in the game is determined by the number of players. There's always more blues than red. Even numbers have more, much more blues than red. That's just how it goes. When it's an odd number, the numbers are closer. These are kept secret. And then there's infection cards. These are diagnostic cards. Most people are clean. One person is going to have the parasite that they will be infected with. Now, these cards are going to get shuffled, and you're going to get one of them, but you may not look at it. So a player does not know if they are infected or not. The game starts off with a brief period of time where everyone puts their heads down, and then at a signal, all the players who are part of the acquisition support specialist, the red team, will look at each other so they know who each other is, put their heads down, then everyone wakes up and the game begins. Now the game is going to revolve around this bag of dice. This bag of dice has many different dice that are inside it here, and not all the dice are the same. In fact, there is three of each type of die. The dice are mostly the same. There's one side of each die that's different than the other ones. So if, for example, this symbol is on this die, this symbol is on this die, but the rest of the sides of the dice are the same. So on a player's turn, they can draw a die from the bag, roll it, and take the action. If they don't like it, they can re-roll it and then take that action. If they w don't want to take the action, they can set the side as die aside as a reserve die, and on a future turn, use that instead of taking the action now. If they ever roll one of these symbols, that is an engine symbol, their turn is immediately over and this is placed to the side. When enough of these symbols have been rolled, the game is over. Otherwise, the different symbols. This one here, you can add or subtract a health from somebody. This one, I can look at the parasite card of, of the player to my right or to my left. Uh, this one here, you can quarantine someone, they don't get to take any actions, but nothing can be done to them. This one here will reshuffle all the, actually no, this one, I'm sorry, you put out and the next time one of these symbols comes, it cancels it, so it keeps the game a little bit, happening a little bit longer. Uh, this one here, you can look at someone else's affiliation to see what team they're on. There's an instant kill die in here. There's all sorts of dies that do different things, but mostly you're going to be uh, hitting other people for damage and checking to see who has the parasite. Now eventually, uh, players are going to get killed. Players start with two life, and if you get killed, you're out of the game, uh, and you, you will take, you'll reveal to see if you had the parasite or not. You'll also reveal your affiliation so people will know what you are, and then if you were the parasite, 
you take that with all the living players, shuffle it back in, and now someone else is the parasite. Now eventually, the game is going to end. If all the blue players are killed, then the red team wins. Otherwise, when the ship comes to rescue you, when the engines are fixed, and a certain number of these symbols are out based on number of players, then players are going to have a minute to discuss who they think has the parasite. They will then all point fingers at who they think has the parasite, and whoever has the most fingers is ejected out the airlock. Then, if that, that person reveals if they're the parasite, if they are the parasite, the blue players win. Anyone else, the red players win. That's how the game works. Brooks Gambit is a very easy game to learn. There's only a few rules. Uh, the game is not that complex, but the subtleties are very interesting. Now, on the back of each player's card and on the back of the rule book, you can see all the different symbols of the dice, but it's pretty simple. And also, each character is different. The captain is in the game because the gameplay starts with him, and also at the end of the game, the captain breaks ties. But every game is going to play out differently. And it's almost kind of a meta game. Many social deduction games have a meta game where when you play away in one game and then you move to the next game, it's going to play a little bit differently because now you know how that game worked. In many games, one person is a traitor or a bad guy, and they are hiding and therefore they have to lie and it's very nerve wracking. Well, in this game, if you're the parasite, you don't know that. There's no way for you to check your card. You are depending on the people next to you or some dice let you check anyone's card to tell you. Well, if they are red players, they're probably lying to you. And that's very intriguing. If a red player can discover that they are the parasite, then that player wants to stay alive at all costs. If they, if they know a blue player is a parasite, they want to keep that blue player alive. Meanwhile, the other players are trying to find this person. They don't necessarily want to kill the person with the parasite, because then the parasite jumps into someone else's body. But they do want to kill the red players. And so there's this double talk. And it's, I mean, it's very simple, right? There's not these layers and layers of complexity at the game. You're saying, yeah, this person's a parasite, or no, they're not a parasite, or they're on blue, or let's do this together. And there's some back and forth, and the game is 20 minutes. It's not a very long game at all. So even if you get killed at player elimination, you're not going to be out long, but you're sitting there going, now, if you said this about this and that, and you're, the blue players are frantically trying to figure out who the red players are, because when the vote comes, the red players can easily vote together as a block and point to somebody, the blue players must outdo that. The blue players definitely have a harder time in the odd numbered games. So if you're playing with seven, five, or three, three players, I actually haven't played as low as three. Does it go down to three? No, just seven and five. Those are harder because there's four blues and three reds and three blues and two reds, respectively. In the even number games, it's three blues to one red, four blues to two reds, and five blues to three reds. It's just an easier setup. So that's that's an interesting thing. I don't think it's impossible for the blue players to win in the odd number games, but it definitely is a little bit more difficult. So you have a special ability, and almost every special ability is once per game, except the stowaway who has no vote. So that when they're in a game, that's interesting because they can just yell as much as they want, but they don't get to vote at the end. And if this was a longer game, 40 minutes, it might be problematic, but this is brilliant. It works really well. You're really sitting there trying to think, they said this about that person. They agreed with them. Are they working together? And am I infected? Is this person infected? We want to find the infected person to kick out on the very last turn or kill all the red players, and then we can easily figure out who's infected. There's just a lot going on, but just a few decisions. You pull a die, roll the die, take the action, or re-roll. So that's pretty cool. The rule book's a little small. I mean, it's useful that the rule book is so short. But the writing here is teensy weensy, eensy peensy. And the design of the cards is really ho hum, honestly. I, the artwork on the, for the different characters is very generic sci fi. I do like these maraschino cherry pieces for life, those are great. But it's just a very, the dice though, the dice are great. There are six different types of dice. That's a lot of different custom dice. Uh, how many dice are in the game total? I think there's 18 dice. Uh, 21 dice, so I'm sorry, there's seven different dice. That's really neat to me. That's really neat that there's that many custom dice. I love that. You're never sure what abilities are going to happen and who's going to do what and when people are going to use their one-time special ability. This is a good social deduction game. I was, like I said, I was very, like, eh, I don't know, I already play, Re I like Resistance, I like Werewolf, I like this and that. But this is very solid, so I know it doesn't look like much, but don't be turned off by that. This game, which plays up to eight players, which is a cool thing, 
is a lot of fun. It's short, it's simple, but has levels of complexity that add a lot to theming. A good combo, Burke's Gambit. Dice Tower of Judgment, excellent. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Ah, shut the door! <laughs> <laughs>